Hello and welcome to McLaren Port Huron's Today's Health Program. I'm your host, Michelle Baker. Today we'll be talking about shoulder injuries and common causes of shoulder pain with board certified orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Timothy Lucas. Dr. Lucas, thank you for speaking with us today. Thank you for having me back. Now let's begin with going over uh, the anatomy of the shoulder. Sure. Let's we'll put, bring a diagram up here. So the shoulder is a ball and socket joint very similar to the hip in that respect. Um, and it has, you know, there are several other components to it. The rotator cuff tendons, which we have four rotator cuff tendons, one in the front, two on the top, and then two in the back, or one in the back. Um, those help elevate and move the shoulder in space. You also have your biceps tendon where it, at, that attaches on the top of the socket that helps function both the elbow and the shoulder. Um, along with on top of the shoulder, you have the AC joint and the associated ligaments thereof. One more thing, the cartilage surface is between the ball and the socket. That space is the cushion that allows the joint to glide on itself. Now, what are the most common causes of shoulder pain? The most common cause is overuse for most people, tendoni tendonitis or bursitis. Um, the space that the rotator cuff lives in between the acromion and, and the bone down here, that space is called the subacromial space. Some people have tightening of that space by a development of bone spur in the front, and as people elevate their arm, that tendon can actually pinch on the undersurface of the acromion, causing impingement, tendonitis, bursitis. Um, that's probably the most common uh, problem that causes pain in patients. Other causes, acute injuries, falls, can, you can actually tear this rotator cuff if you fall on an outstretched arm. Um, arthritis, loss of cartilage between the ball and the socket can cause a lot of pain and problems. The biceps tendon is probably one of the underestimated causes or sources of pain in the shoulder. You can injure that by lifting too heavy of things or too heavy of weights going overhead too much, just like you can the rotator cuff. And people that develop rotator cuff tears actually can have more problems with the biceps as well. Um, frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis can develop. We're not sure why it develops in certain patients. Higher incidence in diabetic patients. Um, problems with the AC joint, sprains of the AC joint, falling directly on that like football players. That's a very common area to injure. Sounds like there's a lot that can go on and go wrong in that space of the sure. shoulder it, there. It's something that you have to parse out and really define to find the source of the pain. Now what areas in the shoulder are most susceptible to injury? Again, that the rotator cuff is probably the most prone to injury just because that space can be quite tight and it's almost like a friction syndrome. If you imagine rubbing a rope on a rock as you raise your arm up and pinch that space off, it can grate and kind of tear into that tendon over time and cause a tear over time. What, other than pain, what are some of the symptoms of a shoulder condition? So, so the most common thing that brings patients in is pain, um, and that pain tends to be lateral pain. People feel it on the side of their arm, almost like a muscle ache. Um, they also have, the, the symptoms tend to be worse with overhead activity, and night pain is a real driver of patients coming into the office. Once it interrupts their sleep for long enough, then, then they're coming to the office to get it checked out. Um, in, besides pain, you know, patients with rotator cuff tears can also develop weakness. So they have a hard time doing certain things, moving their arm in certain positions, reaching behind them, um, lifting things. Um, loss of motion or stiffness can be a big problem as well. Sometimes you're not able to raise that arm over your head like you used to. Um, and, that, and, and patients that have an acute injury where they fall and then they can't raise their arm after they fall, we really suspect damage to the rotator cuff. Now, a lot of people have like aches and pains or they think they might have hurt their shoulder somehow overusing it and, and tend to ne not go to the doctor yes. for it. At what point should they really seek medical treatment? So I, you know, for, for patients that, that have developed a pain in their shoulder that, that they haven't had before, you know, doing some common sense things like resting for a period of two or three days, taking some over-the-counter anti-inflammatories to try to get rid of the inflammation, try to get rid of the pain, and then once things start to feel better, doing some gentle stretching exercises to loosen the shoulder up. If it doesn't get better after three or four days, then that's the time to start thinking about getting it checked out. If you have a fall and you have intense acute pain right away, you, you may speed that process up. 
Now, what tests and procedures do you use to diagnose shoulder pain? So the, 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 the biggest thing that helps me define you know, what's going on with the patient is when they come in, I do a, a thorough history. You know, did you have an injury? Is, are you having pain with overhead use? Have you had problems in the past? When does it hurt? Where does it hurt? Doing that thorough history is probably the most important thing. And then we move on to the physical examination. I'm going to check things like your, your range of motion, your strength of the rotator cuff. Um, with respect to range of motion, both passive and active, to see if there's a difference, see if you've developed a frozen shoulder. Um, after that, we'll check for instability of the shoulder, which is an uncommon problem, but it, it can happen. Check for instability, look for any atrophy, any long-term problems on the outside of the skin. Um, and then once we're done with the examination, then I'll decide, do we need x-rays? And most people get x-rays, so we'll define whether there's loss of joint space, anything going on inside the bone, because there are some unusual things that can happen around the shoulder you don't want, you want to rule out. Um, in addition, the x-ray will help us define how tight that subacromial space is, that the space the rotator cuff lives in, to see if that patient's more prone to developing uh, tears of the rotator cuff or impingement syndrome. If a patient looks like they have weakness and they have a defined problem like a rotator cuff tear, I may proceed with an MRI, particularly if there's an acute injury. If it's a long-standing problem, I might forego that and start treatment initially to see if we get some improvement because not everybody that has a small rotator cuff tear needs surgery. Doctor, this is great information. We need to take a break. We'll continue in a moment.